Good afternoon, I'm Brian Brett with Chelan County Fire District 1 and Douglas County Fire District 2, currently serving as the fire chief for both entities. This August 2nd, on the primary ballot, there's a ballot measure asking to combine the two fire districts into one fire department, which would be a regional fire authority with the name Wenatchee Valley Fire Department. Why would we do this? What are the financial implications and what are the operational gains? Well, first, there is no point in combining the fire departments if we can't improve the level of service. So in our study, we first explored how do we improve the level of service? And then we vetted the finances to make sure we could cash flow it and have better opportunities, if it would be valid to have better opportunities or not, together with our combined finances. First, let me speak to the operations component. We as a combined organization, we'll be able to reduce the number of chiefs and deputy chiefs and save money immediately that way. Secondly, a substantial savings will be realized by not building duplicate fleet maintenance facilities and training facilities. Thirdly, we're going to hire six firefighters. So that's where the question comes in to me as, well, if you're combining the fire districts, should there be efficiencies and should you save money? Well, yes, we are saving money. However, with the growth in our area and the increase in call volume and the decrease in volunteers, we need to hire additional firefighters to have a minimum level of staffing. For example, we run 5,200 calls a year as a combined entity. Every 39 hours, we have a fire call. We respond to all motor vehicle accidents. The fire department is the one that cuts you out of your car, provides the manpower in partnership with our ambulance companies, which is a great team, by the way, to make sure our, our loved ones come out of these automobile accidents neurologically intact, safe from fire, and transported to medical care. We also partner with the ambulance companies in providing emergency medical care. We are dispatched to all life-threatening medical events. The non-life-threatening medical events are partners that the ambulance companies handle. By staffing our fire departments with the six additional firefighters, that will give us the Rock Island Station staffed. That gives us the ability to cover 80 plus percent of our population where the call volume is the highest for our fires, car wrecks, and significant medical emergencies. For example, your brain starts to die in four minutes without oxygen. We want to get to you in four to six minutes. And it takes three people to initiate good CPR. Someone has to breathe for you, someone has to do chest compressions, and someone needs to run the defibrillator. Which one do you want to do without? We want to be there, we want to be able to provide this care we want to be able to supplement our ambulance company who provides the advanced life support care in the field. We do the peripheral work. We move the patient from the location to the ambulance and provide the manpower to do that to take care of our citizens. As far as fire response goes, currently we have 14 firefighters minimum on duty in the two districts combined. If we pass the regional fire authority, hire the six additional firefighters, which will staff the Rock Island Fire Station, we will have a minimum of 16 firefighters on duty. For the first time in the district's history, we will be staffed by one person above the National Fire Protection Association standard for staffing a fire apparatus, for staffing a fire in a single family residence. Let me just speak to the staffing on fire engines so you see what you get for $1.50. On the ballot measure, we're asking to go to set our rate at $1.50. Currently, Schlein County Fire District 1 is at $1.32. Douglas County Fire District 2 is at $1.26. We're asking to set that rate to $1.50, which is approximately $8.50 to $10 a month more than you currently pay for a half a million dollar home. That money is gonna pay for the six firefighters, invest in our apparatus replacement fund, invest in our facilities, and maintain our operations. Yet, that will only give us two firefighters on a fire engine 
at our seven staffed fire stations. That is a property conservation staffed fire engine and is better than we've ever had it. However, the National Fire Protection Association standard for staffing is for firefighters. Yet, our state allows us an exemption in the Washington Administrative Code that if we have three firefighters on a fire engine, we can enter a structure and initiate a rescue if we arrive and someone tells us that their loved one is inside. If we have two firefighters on the fire engine, we have to wait for the additional fire engine to arrive to initiate the rescue actions. However, staffing the Rock Island Fire Station allows us to converge on our other fire station locations much more quickly. So if we don't have that third person on our engine, the wait time is much less. By the way, our third person is a college student in our college student program. That's where we pick up the third person and our traditional volunteers. Unfortunately, our traditional volunteers have declined by 70% in the last 10 years, which warrants the need to hire additional firefighters to maintain a minimum level of response. In our community, we're now a population of 80,000. The standard the public holds us to in the expectation for service is high. The public expects an urban level of service delivery, yet our funding model is still based on rural suburban funding with a large, robust volunteer program of which we no longer have. The, so let me make an analogy on how this benefits our community by staffing the Rock Island Fire Station. I get questions from residents in the Sunny Slope area or next to the East Mont Street Fire Station. Well, how does staffing a fire station in Rock Island benefit me? I live next to the fire stations in my area. Well, currently, if there is a car accident, fire call, the fire engine from the Schoolchuck Station and the Eastmont Street Station go to Rock Island. And this happens approximately 300 times a year. So where the call volume is the highest, you just lost both your resources for a period of time to the Rock Island area. And we're likely to reposition the fire engine out of Sunny Slope downtown where the call volume is the highest or if it's a structure fire your fire engine's gone to Rock Island as well. By staffing Rock Island the unit availability of fire engines exponentially increases because you would send the Rock Island and Eastmont Street station now the Squilchuck stations within that four minute response zone to the East Wenatchee Eastmont Street area where the call volume is the highest. It's a, uh, I like to think of it, put it in a baseball analogy. Most people can relate to baseball. They've either played fast pitch or baseball or watched it. And currently with our staffing, it's like the bases are loaded, the pitcher throws the ball and it gets past the catcher. Our current staffing doesn't allow for the pitcher to go cover home plate. If we staff the Rock Island Fire Station, when the ball gets past the catcher, the pitcher, we will have that pitcher able to cover home plate while still covering the remainder of our bases to the best of our ability. That's the relatability and how we, we deploy in the fire service. Let me just speak more to the August ballot measure and what will follow after that. The August ballot measure is simply asking the voters to combine the two fire departments into one and have the rate at $1.50 and then it is implied that we are under the 1% revenue cap, which we are from Initiative 747. Let me dive into this explanation a little bit. The only time a fire district receives an influx of money is the one year we reset the rate. That is the only time. For example, our assessed valuation has grown 45% over the last five years yet the fire district only gets 1% of its previous year budget. 1% of the previous year's budget, year after year after year, until the fire district goes back and resets the rate, then we receive an influx of money. However, due to inflation, living under a 1% revenue increase of the prior year's budget, 
is unsustainable. It's sustainable for a short period of time. And it depends on how high inflation is, on how long that is sustainable. Historically, it's been seven to 10 years we can get by, but that shortens under 1%. So ballot measure one, because we're forming a new entity, we couldn't do this in, in a single ballot measure. So we have to do two ballot measures. One, form the entity, set the rate, we're capped at the 1% per year. And either this November or maybe next August, come back and ideally ask for a lower rate. We'll do a projection with our assessors and, and not take more than we need, and ideally ask for $1.40, $1.45, and then instead of 1% a year, 4, 5, 6% a year. And that's based on prior year's budget. That additional percentage does two things for us. It maintains our operations for seven to 10 years, tracking with inflation. It also keeps our levy rate steady. Under the 1% revenue cap, whenever the assessed valuation exceeds that, our rate drops. And we don't want to have a big disparity in seven to 10 years between the rate we know we need to function at and where it has plummeted to because we're under 1%. So asking for that additional percentage gives us the extra revenue, sustains our operations, keeps our rates steady, and it also keeps the cost to the taxpayer steady. We would rather come back and ask you years down the road, hey, we need to increase you by a dollar a month versus 15 or $20 a month because our rate has dropped so substantially. And based on the positive economic development that's planned over the next five years here in both districts, we're optimistic that we can come in and ask for a lower rate and potentially a lower percentage. Point being, it's ideally a two ballot measure strategy to sustain separately as entities or as the regional fire authority. We need to do it, ideally do it the same way separately or together. Consequently, if we do it separately, the margin between our revenue and expenses is much smaller. Therefore, our opportunity to fund our fleet, aviation, facilities is diminished. As a combined regional fire authority, both of us working together, pooling our revenue and sharing our expenses, we have a wider margin between our revenue and expenses, which allows us to do more together as far as investing in our fleet, equipment, training, aviation programs. Separately, that margin decreases because we have redundancies that we have to function under as separate entities. Thank you so much, Chamber, for allowing me to come in and give an explanation. Always available to field any questions. Appreciate the opportunity. Have a good day.